Hey guys. So a few years ago, I actually talked to a few of my friends from my bachelor's days, my in UPM, and they were telling me about this girl that you know achieved a lot of piano competition and achievements in her life even before starting her degree. And I was asking them, it's like, oh, you know, you should check her out. She's in my batch and so on and so forth. So I was like trying to pay attention to who actually stands out and you know has that aura. And it was so hard for me to find because when I actually found her, I was like thinking like, wow, she is very humble, very down to earth, and she's no way menacing except when for when she gets on the piano, and then she rips the whole piano keys apart. And I was like absolutely just drawn by the power that she has. But again, as I as I said, if you actually just meet her, she's the most humble person that you would think on the outside, <laughs> but not musically. So, ladies and gentlemen, today I do have the honor of talking to one of my greatest musical seniors that I've ever met, Miss Ling Hui. Hey, how you doing? Hi, I'm I'm doing fine, <laughs> just like everyone else. Um, you know, working from home and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 have you been like? What's work from home for you? Um. Performances I, from home. I, not really, because uh, since I've like graduated from UPM a few months ago, mm-hmm. so um, I engaged myself into like teaching piano lessons. Yeah, so um, it's quite challenging though, teaching piano lesson online through a platform like, like the Zoom. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we have problem in communicating with the students. And the internet connection wasn't stable all the time. Yeah, and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I assume that if you if you are actually teaching them the like avant-garde piece, then that's perfect, right? You want that process. You want that lag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. But h- how did you actually manage to go through it? Like your last semester, you actually had a recital of sorts. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So um, in my last semester in UPM, I was supposed to have my graduation recital together with our symphony orchestra as mm. I was performing the Greek piano concerto. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be honest, I was looking forward to it um, starting from 2019. Yeah, mm. but um, as you can see, we did not expect that the pandemic hit us Oh, yeah. And we are we were forced to, um, you know, do all, all sorts of classes and recordings online instead of performing it on stage. So um, I was quite disappointed from the start because I worked extremely hard for the performance, and um, the process was very frustrated as I was instructed to do so many video recordings for my lecturer to check on my progress. And I even need to think of a way um, to, to uh, combine my recording, my video recording together with the orchestra backup track. Mm-hmm. It's ri- it sounds ridiculous, right? <laughs> so, but um, also um, with the help of my lecturer, she actually found um, a software which is selling all kind of um, backup tracks of different concertos. Oh, <laughs> so wow. we actually, yes, yes, it's quite special. And that's my first time, you know, <laughs> coming into thing like that. And then, um, yeah, we actually purchased the software itself. And of course the backup track. Mm-hmm. And what you have to do is just to adjust the, any, any kind of tempo fluctuation. Um, yeah. And you can adjust whatever you want it and record and combine that's it so that's how i produce my graduation recital video uh, <laughs> yeah because, because in my head it's like uh it, it's quite doable for people like in band so if like um if you're playing like a more modern mm-hmm. piece you can just um program something on the drums and then the guitar and, mm-hmm. and the bass so mm-hmm. i was like thinking how the heck would this girl actually go through with the violin and the viola <laughs> and every single part? Yeah, yeah I, I was quite clueless um, at the beginning because, you know, um, 
most of the time, the backup track was performed in MIDI sound, and it yeah. doesn't sound nice at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, but fortunately, the backup track that uh, was being sold on the software was recorded by a real orchestra, I guess. Yeah. Oh. So, um, mm -hmm. so everything was performed um, quite detailed, I would say. Yeah. So the only thing... And it wasn't awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that wasn't there was just the uh, piano solo. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And I was, I was basically fill in the blanks, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do have to ask, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but which would you actually prefer to actually work with the whole orchestra for that one? Because I know that if you were to actually go through with that symphony orchestra plan, um, mm -hmm. you, it has a lot of different challenges, especially in real world setting whereby you actually have to work with the conductor to actually say, oh, actually this part is 65 BPM, not 60. You should speed it up at this point. <laughs> so these little things, which one would you actually um, prefer to do? Right, I will choose to work with a real symphony orchestra because it is going to be um, the most precious experience, mm -hmm. um, probably once, the one and only chance in my life to play with the orchestra. So I was really sad and frustrated as I knew that I couldn't do this anymore. Yeah. Awesome. So um, that's quite obvious. Like, I think like uh, any performance student will actually rather take the stage. You know, it's, it's that feeling yeah. of literally taking the stage rather than, yeah. yeah. I mean, eventually if you, you will make unexpected mistakes on, sta on stage, but it's still going to be a very memorable experience. Yeah. yeah. And, and that is part of the performance, wouldn't you say so? That, that is part of the music world when yeah. you... Yeah, so according to Ling Hui, this uh, Pier Jin uh, concerto sounds like mm -hmm. this at this part, even though you accidentally did it, but people then will associate with, oh, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you actually even had a lot of experience, as I said, like a lot of people actually talk about uh, the experience that you had before a degree. What, how was that like? Oh. You, especially your performance piano performances? To be honest, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I do not have much uh, experiences in uh, taking part in competitions. To be honest, my music learning journey was quite similar to many, many other people. You know, I, I'm just a very normal school girl who go for extra piano lesson after school. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but I took up both ABRSM course and the Yamaha examination board. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and when I was learning my piano and uh, following the Yamaha examination board, the school tends to organize like year end concerts. And sometimes they do organize um, inter school competitions, I guess. Um, but I never, I have never took part in any one, any of them. Yeah. Uh, what I was doing was only like following my teacher's instruction, you know, go took part in exams and things like that. So my view towards music was very narrow. Yeah. yeah. And things started to change when I came into UPM the first year. Mm -hmm. I, I could still remember when I stepped into our music house. I, I heard a lot of music coming out from all the practice rooms and they sounded wonderful. And I started to think, oh, can I handle this? Can I do this in four years? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just have to make it clear that um, she actually mentioned Music House. So the music department under UPM, University Putra Malaysia, which is where we're both from, it's actually comprised of different houses. So we literally call them Music House. So uh, a, one house could have uh, the office, another house would have the orchestra hall, another house has the recording studio and so on and so forth. And of course, in every house, there's uh, little, little studios that we would take 
we would carry out our rehearsals and, and practices. So let me ask you a, a two-part question. The first mm -hmm. thing is, did you actually find that because of uh, your experience doing Yamaha and EPRSM, that it was easy for you when you entered degree? Or was it more of a point where, okay, you already got the easy part down. Now let's go for the extreme part in, in my degree. Is that what you did? Um, I don't feel um, that the course that I'm doing will get easier, but um, doing both examination boards is definitely a plus point um, mm -hmm. to help to boost your you know, your learning progress. I, I sometimes I feel like I can pick up something a little faster. Yeah. And also um, because I have experience in doing the Yamaha course, my listening skill was better. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I can say that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> my listening skill was a little um, better. So um, it, it takes quite... Um, it takes shorter time for me to learn up a new repertoire. Ah, mm -hmm. But right. the technique part, it still, you know, never, never gets easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, and, and that was the, my follow-up question to that two-part mm -hmm. question. Like, is there actually a, a level? Do you actually think that there is a um, standard level? Okay, this is easy and then medium and then hard and then extreme. Or it's just like every piece it's an extremely new and fresh piece. There is no such thing as just because you can play, for example, a, a Chopin uh, piece. Oh, that means mm -hmm. anything by Tchaikovsky is easy. Is that how it works in the piano world? No, there, there is not such thing. There's no such thing for me. <laughs> yeah, because um, every piece, you know, it's, it's very different. It's very unique in their own way. And even some pieces, maybe um, they were... Uh, they were written in uh, with easier notes, but still, um, you need to be very detailed to express the performance direction. So, um, I won't see all the piece like this. Yeah, they they are all difficult in their own way. Well, they're all difficult. Mm. It's yeah, not like they're all... <laughs> no. <laughs> That's amazing. And, but personally, you personally, mm -hmm. what, what would you say is the most difficult piece that you've played? If you um, could choose just like one or two. Based on my own experience, yeah. the first, the, the most difficult piece that I've ever came to was um, Chopin's Ballad. Mm. Chopin's Ballad number one. Um, and that was my first time taking such a uh, difficult piece to um to go for a competition yeah um and to be honest when i was having my regular piano lesson be before i came into upm i have i have no experience at all in learning big pieces like that so that was my first time ever to came across to such um big piece and I was actually stressed out during the learning progress because the technique was crazy. And yeah, and I need to memorize the whole piece too. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, the pieces was like, the piece was like 10 pages plus long. And also I have no experience in memorizing such long piece before. So everything was very new and very overwhelmed. Did you have like those days that you were just shut down and when, when you just like go to a restaurant, it's like, what would you like to have? Uh, what would you want to eat? Oh, uh, C major. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, no. I, I believe all music students must have, um, must have came across to this situation, you know, where when you think that you can't get any better yeah. and there is no solution, even you keep on practicing every single day, yeah, but um, what I would like to say is um, whenever you are, you know, you are so frustrated with this situation, just give yourself a break, like a day or two, you know, just, yeah, yeah. yeah just 
leave yourself away from piano. Yeah. And I think you will come back with a different view. No. Ah, nice. mm -hmm. And I would I would think that um, that actually also helps with the different view and all that you have mentioned. Yeah, I agree. But also on mm -hmm. the top on top of that, it's like it gives your brain um, sort of space to grow to not only absorb the theoretical part of it, but to actually mm -hmm. understand. Were, were there days that it actually happened to you? Like you actually sat down in front of it. It's like, oh, and then you had an epiphany or something where whereby you did the same thing again and again, hoping for different results. But when you came back afterwards, you realized something. Yes, and it um sometimes you know when you are, you are way uh your 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 thoughts start to be started to be very complicated because you can't um get one of the difficult sections solved, but when you leave, and you came back again, you will realize oh actually this is not a big deal, why would I see things in such complicated way at the first time when I, um when I try to learn it. Yeah, so um, leave, leave yourself, you know, give yourself a break. It's a very good uh, way of refreshing your view and your brain. Yeah, that, mm. that's totally true. And it's a very helpful advice for anyone who's about to embark on a musical journey, not only on a piano, piano yeah. performance journey. True. So you did mention that, that Chopin's ballad mm -hmm. was one of your... Um, difficult pieces that you played for your first competition and yes. and what was that like i mean like uh when was this and how how big was it when was this i think this was um the competition took place in um the second or third semester which uh when i was in year two yeah so <laughs> Um, as expected, I was extremely nervous. You know, I, I can't take my breakfast since morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't even sleep the night before the competition. And, I, and my family members um, followed me to the competition uh, venue. And they helped me to record my performance video. So <laughs> I... My, my brain was totally blank when, uh, when I was performing. You know, I, I can't think of anything. And of course, I made a lot of mistakes, even on sections that I have never did any mistake before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the unexpected things just came out like this. And then I don't even want to watch my own recording because <laughs> I felt like um, that was a very, very bad performance and yeah. it was like a disaster yeah. yeah and i still remember that my lecturer just dropped me a message and asked me uh, about the details of the competition and i just told her that um you know i messed up and she even asked for the recording and i refused to give her <laughs> oh no i lost it <laughs> i i just told her it was too bad to be watched uh. So I refuse to give her. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's better but, that it's better that you said that because in in my head I was like thinking like oh uh, let me do some editing first and then I'll send to you. <laughs> no, even <laughs> editing could not save the performance. I would say. <laughs> like just crop all the bad parts and then you just like left with a quarter of the. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! But it was a very memorable experience. <laughs> Um, is, you did say that this was in your second year, your third semester. Was this the uh, the PIPC? Uh, no, this was uh, the Euro Asia Piano Competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, it took place in KL, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think the competition has gotten a lot bigger. It went to like a few region in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And I think they are continuing to organize the competition every year. But I did not go back to the competition anymore. Oh, okay. Hmm. The, the reason I, I wanted to ask you personally about the PIPC is that it's, um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, some, it's the piano competition that's quite close to us. You know, yeah. both spiritually and geographically. Yes. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, the PIPC, the Putra International Piano Competition, that's an annual piano competition that UPM actually houses. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's an international competition. So, um, a lot of students from other parts of Malaysia actually come and take part in it. Yeah. And there were even like international um, competitors from different okay. countries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not only from wh- only from Southeast Asia or even further. No, even further. They have uh, they have pianists from various countries. I would say, from USA, wow. yeah, from China, yeah, yeah and in Japan, mm-hmm. a few more. And, and what was that like compared to the uh, Euro Asia piano competition? Of course, the scale is much bigger mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and. It's even scarier <laughs> because you know the the stage setting was way uh, way so different compared to the Euro Asia. Mm-hmm. The Euro Asia competition took place in a um in a small auditorium hall, mm-hmm. and then um but for PIPC, I think it looks more like a concert somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because you, they, they have the eight feet sine wave um, grand piano on stage and all the spotlight is just shining on you. Yeah. So mm, I, was, I was nervous as well. I mean, the same <laughs> as you yeah. can expect it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, because um, I am not a performance person, you know, I, I don't really enjoy performances or competitions on stage. <laughs> yeah. So I actually hesitated to sign up for the competition, PIPC, but um, my lecturer kind of like encouraged and she wanted me, she wanted me to go for it. So I just signed up as she wished. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that you said like, um, you don't favor the, uh, the competition or performance mm-hmm. side, but, but you are a performance student, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. This is this is weird because um, I don't know. I I I just dislike the feeling of um, you know, all pe- um, all eyes on me, and I I was quite scared of, and I was quite worried of how people will look at me if I make a mistake on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, I I always came across to um thoughts like that. So I don't enjoy performance because um, from the beginning, um, when I step up, step up onto the stage, I was, I'll be <clears throat> worrying like, how if I make a mistake? How if I forget my score? How if I, I lost my, my way, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. things like yeah. that. And, and what about the competition side? Because some people actually uh, say that, at least me personally, I, I do agree with this, that music is not something that's meant to be competed for how you play it and how i play it and how another person plays it on the same instrument but with the same piece might be different because of how we grow up how we play and all the maybe you listen to other artists i listen to other artists so that actually uh, uh, results in a different style a different manner of how that piece will come up so hence it doesn't make sense to actually compete for it is that, is that what you think? Um, Would you agree? I kind of agree to what you have said. Um, but personally, I am viewing competition in another perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes if you go out, uh, if you sign up for a competition, um, you will get to see how other pianists, you know, um, perform and express themselves. And then you can learn some... Uh, plus points from them. And um, of course, you will get to hear like different style of expressing the same repertoire. Mm -hmm. So I would view um, the competition as a learning platform, like how you carry yourself on stage. Yeah, but of course, um, you know, the, the techniques in different uh, pianists will definitely be competitive and if both of them are playing the same repertoire yeah 
Mm. So before uh, we close, I just wanted to touch a bit more about the PIPC thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> did, you did mention that there were uh, other pianists from U the United States and from other Western countries and even Asian countries. You know. Is there such a thing as, um, uh, in the classical world, at least in the piano classical world, is there such a thing as building connections and actually mm. for, for actually performing with them in the future? Because um, for, for me personally, I understand how if I, I'm a drummer and I meet another person who is a trumpet player and he tells me, oh, I know another person who is a bassist. Okay, let's all get together and then we'll play. But for you, it's more of an individual thing especially in a competition like that. So is there actually a, a sense of camaraderie and circle building, social circle building when it comes to these things? Um, I would say definitely yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, um, you know, we get to meet new friends in competition, although it looks like more, more to, a, to an individual thing. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, we have chances to like talk to the other pianists and we make friends. Yeah, so um, going for a competition, um, I think we can obtain quite a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. And also if you have experience in performing one of your repertoire in a competition, um, when, you, you, when you are going to perform it for the second time, it sounds totally different. Because the competition helps you, you know, to gain some um, different, different, uh, different expression. I would say, yeah. Nice. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing with uh, all your experiences and telling us about your uh, performance experiences, or rather, your mm -hmm. anxiety in performance, <laughs> still performance experiences, and your competitions now. Now, uh, would you think that there are ways that um, either for you or uh, upcoming piano students or piano performance students uh, um, to actually integrate this with their other musical skills, such as like composition, arranging, or uh, studio recording, music tech, and so on? Mm, first of all, I think... Um, of course, improving your playing technique is the uh, is the priority. But other than other than playing music, I think it is important to build relations, you know, with your friends, with your lecturer, because they will help you a lot throughout your musical journey, and you can always share your problems um, with your friends. You know, sometimes your friends can be a very good listener. And I think um, you, uh, building your own chamber music team would be cool. You know, people just gather around and play music happily. Yeah, so just enjoy your musical journey to the maximum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's very true. Because mm -hmm. um, it seems like, especially when, with what you've shared today, uh, people always see that it's always used to gain an advantage over each other or other people might think that you know if you perform quite bad then uh, you would be considered a bad musician but actually at the end of the day it should be about yeah. the fun of it getting yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but I know it's definitely going to be difficult um, to let go of what you have made mistakes uh, during your performance but as you have mentioned that's not the end of the world you know, yeah. you still have chances to improve because I used to be that way too, you know. I, I just can't get over my own mistake and I can still thinking about it after a few days or even weeks. Yeah, yeah that, that is not helping you, you know. You, you just need to let go and then challenge yourself again. Yeah, but I, I would say that the, it's actually important to hold on to it for a while. I mean, it's, it's normal to suck yeah. over it. It's something like, you know, um, in, in high school, we actually have this final examination called SPM, Sijil Pengajian Malaysia. Is this what it's called? Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's like, so, <laughs> so even like in SP, after you get the results for your SPM, you wanted straight A's, but you only got like nine A's. And it's normal for you to suck for a few days, for a few weeks. 
But then mm-hmm. after a few years, you don't even think about it. So I, I think yeah. this would be the same, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, you don't have to be disappointed on your results. I mean, if you know that you have already tried your best, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So before we end, I just wanted to ask you, like personally, is there anything that you can uh, share, like with with uh, regarding to your future plans, like where you plan to, uh, what's the next step for you in in this COVID world, or rather in this like <laughs> after COVID goes away and so on. Mm, um, actually, my original plan was to further my study in the US. Um, but um, recently, I decided not to um, accept the offer as I wanted to try to explore the research field. Yeah, so um, I have already applied my fast track PhD studies in UM, and I did my interview like two days ago. <laughs> yeah, so hmm. I will just wait for the results and. Yeah, and see if I will be accepted or not. <laughs> Fast track PhD, not even masters. Yeah, I can complete the studies in three years if I'm hardworking enough. <laughs> Straight to like like immediate doctorate, no. Yes. <laughs> wow. It's a fast track. It's a fast uh, track. Yeah, yeah. That that is mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. I'm so <laughs> ooh, that's that's a very um I, I would think that it's a very scary thing to like go through like a um a fast track program. I mean like, Yeah. Like said, I'm not track. sure what's going to happen to <laughs> so just wait. Yeah, that is true. But I am excited to to you know, pay attention to how you develop and where you go on from here so that future generations can actually um, follow in your footsteps. Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Lingui, for sharing today. Uh, I hope everything goes well for you, especially with your uh, fast track plans. Yep. Ooh, even saying it again and again, it it, it still scares me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting Bobby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. If you have any questions for Miss Lindley or even for me or for any of the topics that we've talked about today, you can just shoot us an email at aminbob13 at yahoo.com and I'll get Miss Lindley or any guests in future episodes to answer to you. Thank you so much.